Okay, well, morning everyone, it's uh, 1st of November. Just thought I'd do a little walk around and a bit of a tech fest on this uh, 1991 the Kawasaki GPZ 550. This is the ZX model, so it's got the Unitrack, the uh, anti die forks, lots of other bits on it. This is one of my own personal collection. I've got a few little things that I uh, like to play with in the garage, and this is one of my little favourites actually. So let's go through what we've done. Um, this was in a big lockup actually for about four or five years. And didn't really uh, do much before that to be honest. It was largely used as a commuter. I've done a few of these older restorations now and a good friend of mine said, well, I've got this rusting away in the locker and um, come and have a look at it. If you want, you can take it away for the price of a, a bottle of red wine. So I thought I'd uh, bite his arms off, metaphorically speaking. So as you can see, she's not running the fairing. Um, main reasons are for that, that I always prefer the look of it without the fairing. Controversial or otherwise, I just think it looks uh, a little bit sharper if I'm honest. So what have we done to it? Uh, let's do a front to back then. So we've done front wheel bearings, uh, we've done new BT45 on the front, new bearing seals obviously, uh, the anti-dive was completely stripped down and rebuilt. Same with the front calipers. Uh, the pistons are actually really good, no problems with those. Uh, obviously new fresh seals in there. Uh, new pads, these are Kayato pads which are actually quite cheap but I always found them quite good actually. On these older bikes, again no problems with those. Uh, inside the forks, completely rebuild on those, so it's new seals, guides, bushes. These are the air forks as well, so you've got some extra seals at the top. They've all been replaced as well. Uh, what else have we done with the front fork? That's pretty much it. It's a comprehensive rebuild on those. The stanchions are actually really good. Just a bit of wet and dry to clean those up and uh, no leaks or anything, so really, really good. Engine itself, uh, it's got 40,000 miles on it, so it's hardly running for one of these. Uh, these will clock very easily, no problems at all. As always, I drop the sump out, clean the screen in there, uh, valve job on it, so clearances. Only one was fractionally out, nothing to really write home about. Uh, the carbs again, full strip down. Uh, actually, rebuild kits weren't needed, which was quite surprising. These were uh, still nice and fuel tight, just to balance up on those. Diaphragms are all really good, no issues at all on those. Now, the rear uni track, this is where bulk, bulk of the work's been done. It's a little bit breezy today, as you can hear. I'll try and get out of the wind a little bit. So, the uni track itself. Uh, this has got new oil-on bushes all the way through. These run a plain bush, and it's uh, not one of Kawasaki's finest inventions, to be honest. This has got the oil-on bushes in there. Uh, new pins all the way through from Kawasaki. And the actual rear end on it is actually quite good, if I'm completely honest. Um, that did cost a fair bit, probably a couple of hundred quid in parts alone, to be honest. And that's where a bulk of the work was done. It was a bare frame rebuild. Um, absolutely everything was taken off it, right back to the bare frame. Every single component completely taken out, cleaned up, greased, rebuilt, replaced as needed. Um, so the rebuild took about a year and a half. It took a fair bit of time. I just trip over a bush there. And the main reason for that is the exhaust system. It's not the fact that we couldn't find them. It's the fact most of them are quite frankly ridiculous price. Um, and this Jama one popped up, which is a four into two. I've been looking for it for a little while. And, uh, this popped up on our favourite auction site. We all know what we're talking about. And I picked it up for the Princess Hammer 40 quid. Um, it was actually listed for the 400, which was called the, Z, the uh, Z400 F2, which is exactly the same bike. In fact, it's got a very uh, slightly smaller bore, and I think it's got a short tray crank in it as well, the 400. Um, it's largely Japanese domestic market model. Um, but other than that, the running gear is absolutely identical to the 550. So it bolted straight on, no problems at all. Um, it's not the most exciting sounding thing in the world. It does sound a bit like a, a bit like a shopping trout trolley, if I'm honest. Um, but it runs absolutely beautiful. It runs absolutely perfect with that exhaust on it. It turns some ridiculous miles to the gallon. So for full tanks, about 12 pound. 17 litre tank in these and it returns just short of 200 miles per tank so what's 
about 60 odds to the gallon, something like that. Um, I have got a few other bits in the garage, like I said. I've got a ZX10R, um, and to be honest, I tend to jump on this really, uh, mainly because it's just so relaxing to ride. Uh, real world horsepower, oh, I guess it's somewhere around 55 60 horsepower. It's certainly not going to worry the back tyre, which is again a BT45. No issues with that at all. Um, they're really well suited tyre for these. In fact, they're so good they're still producing, and I tend to run these on all my older bikes. Um, they tend to last very well. They are a little bit skinny compared to modern tyres, as you can see. And uh, it does white line quite a bit. Uh, it's just one of those little quirks with the older bikes that you get used to with, with the skinnier tyres. Rear disc is a little bit scored as you can see, works absolutely fine. Flew through the MOT again, no problems at all. Um, did have a little bit of a puncture the other day in the rear. My local tyre place fixed it for 10 quid. So we're really not going to complain with it at all. And there's a lot of my rebuilds, I've done a fair few of these now. I've been in a few magazines and done a little bit of track riding as well. Obviously not on this, on my other stuff. Um, so this is a complete mechanical rebuild rather than cosmetic as you can see. I'll tell you why I've done that, that was a deliberate choice. Um, I tend to like to use these sort of bikes and if I do a full cosmetic rebuild on it, chances are I probably wouldn't use it very much. So I've gone completely through it mechanically, it is absolutely A1 mechanically. Um, it's got a few scars and scrapes over the years but hey, haven't we all? Obviously new chain and sprockets. Um, although the sprockets are actually fine, because they've been laid up for a number of years, the uh, the chain really wasn't serviceable anymore. Bear in mind the cost was only about 70 quid for a new chain and sprockets. And in the interest of safety, now we've got the new chain and sprockets on there. It is a soft link chain. Uh, some people choose to run a spring link. Um, while I understand the reasons behind it, let's be honest, it is a little bit easier. Uh, I have had three failures of a spring link chain. Uh, one of those on my Bandit 6. One was on a uh, GSX-R600 SRAD. And why someone would put one of those on an SRAD, to be honest, I'm not completely sure. Um, but I only had the bike about three days coming back from work one day. And the, uh, the expected happened. The spring link failed and we lost the link. And that was... Uh, bum like a rabbit's nose moment if I'm honest and ever since that day even if I see a spring link I'm not interested what kind of bike it is I simply won't run them um, that includes right down to 125s 250s I've had over 120 bikes now um, yes I appreciate failures are rare uh, I'm not going to say I'm going to ride like Barry Sheen because I certainly don't but for the sake of four or five pounds for a proper link once you've got yourself a decent chain tool, um, you've done it a few times, you understand what you're trying to do. It really isn't very difficult to do. Um, and again, if you've got any doubts about your work, just pop down to your local bike shop. Just get them to quickly check it over. Most bike shops are more than happy to look at it for free of charge. I'll just say, yep, that's fine. And in fact, my local one is uh, on a couple of occasions. If I've done a rent thole kit because they run a hard link, uh, he's just popped his wow tool on there for me, just to make sure that it's uh, exactly as it should be. Because the Rental chains are uh, lovely and strong. And I'll be honest, I do tend to use those on all my other bikes, but this little 550, well it's... Well, 55, 60 horsepower, I guess, somewhere around there. And the sort of mileages that I'll be doing on it, uh, this little budget chain of sprockets is absolutely fine. I've done 700 miles on it now. Adjusted it twice and uh, had absolutely no issues with it at all. I do keep it well lubed up. We use uh, gear oil, EP80 on them. I tend to clean the chain every sort of 50, 100 miles. I know it's a little bit anal, but I do get some quite frankly ridiculous mileage out of chain and sprockets. I've had over 40,000 out of them before now. So, in the way of uh, technology, what's this bad boy got on board? Uh, it's got a full 9 axis IMU, it's got traction control, it's got magic wheelie, uh, it's got ABS, uh, no, actually, I'll be completely lying there. It's got absolutely nothing, if I'm honest, and that's what I love about it. It's got, as you can see, a very lovely 80s slash 90s retro cockpit there, if you can call it that. And it has got this rather splendid Star Trek Battlestar Galactic fuel gauge 
warning panel there. It's got your lovely warning lights there. This one's got 40,600 miles on it. It's got a voltmeter as well, and that is about as far as it goes. These are a very basic machine. They essentially started off in the 70s, really. Um, they were basically based around the Z550 chassis, which became the GPZ, the smaller Z, because it's air cooled. The 25 version that lasted many, many years. And then it became the ZX, and I think it was 84, 85, not completely sure to be honest. Well, Kawasaki ran this for, for many, many years. This is a 91. This is one of the very late ones. Um, main difference is being things like your anti dive, your front discs. But mechanically, underneath, they are exactly the same bike. And as the, the old adage goes, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And the engine lived on for many, 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 many years in things like the GT550 and later on the ZR550 Zephyr. Um, again, it's based on very old tech. It's an 8-valve. I will do a little ride-in video at some point, so we do this little part one video. And the engine's absolutely cracking for road use, to be honest. Um, pulls right down to 2,000 RPM. The gearing's lovely and short, so she'll go down to walking pace and first. Six big gearbox on these. And she hums along at motorway speed, shall we say that? Um, so 70 works at about five and a half, six thousand RPM. And if the roads are closed and you're on a private road, you can uh, get into three digits. It does take a little bit of work, but it is achievable. That's a lovely little bike. So the next video we'll do, we'll do our little riding video. So. Uh, Stay so involved guys. Thanks very much. There you go, we'll carry on with that video a bit more because uh let that car through. So where are we? We're out in the new forest. I'm lucky enough to live down this way. Uh, it's about six, seven miles from my house I suppose, the new forest. I do come out here quite a lot and do lots of these little reviews and things. And it's nice and relaxing. So We'll close this video down properly now the car's gone out of the way. Just turn around and show you the lots of dog walkers, lots of cyclists. Very windy day today. So uh, we'll jump on board the little beastie for the next video.